Man, it's uh about to go there, guys. What doll is best? That's a good question. I get that one a lot as well. I say my answer, the, the simple answer to that question is whatever doll works best for you in your workflow. Now, if you're a new person to this industry, then you have to do a little bit of studying first before you make investment into something. Some things you have to look at is the price of a doll. How much is that doll? Is there any costs involved when it comes to updating? Some platforms offer subscription models. You have to look at that. Is that something you're willing to do? With subscription models, oftentimes what they're trying to do is create a platform for you and I and give you all the tools that you will need in a doll that will cost you $500 and up, right? But they make all of that available to you in a sus subscription model. Subscription model is usually a small price that you pay monthly in order to have that doll. Over time, it can be very expensive if you look at it in the long run. You know, after paying $10, $20, whatever, on something for a month for a period of time, like two years or something like that, you may have bought the doll twice, maybe, maybe, maybe not. But over time, you, you will end up paying for that platform you're using versus if you just bought it outright the perpetual license of it you know what i mean so it just really depends on where you are where you sit financially in terms of that so in the case of personas they have what's called sphere that's something you can pay monthly to have access to studio one and also all of the content that's available in the store you know the libraries and whatnot and and that's great you know, I think that's a great deal, but it, they also make it available where you can buy the full license of Studio One. You know what I mean? And as before, you have access to Studio One. And that's great. But like me, I like to have everything. So I have Studio One 5 as of the date of this video. And I, I also have Sphere, you know, paying monthly on it to have all of the extra stuff as well. In the event that I stop paying for the Sphere account, I still have Studio One Five. You get what I'm saying? But for those of you that can't afford to buy the professional license of Studio One Five, you will go through the Sphere route. And they also still make Studio One Five available to you. But the moment you stop paying on that, you lose access to Studio One Five. So that's how that works. That's me explaining it once again, how that works. Reason is another one. If you have Reason Studio, I believe, Reason Studio Plus, I believe it is, there is a subscription base. You, you can also buy the Perpetual. I don't know if you can still do that. I have the Perpetual license of Reason and I use it just for the racks. Um, I, I use it to add as a plugin in the doll that I'm using. I don't really use Reason, but I like their racks, the instrument that comes in the racks, some of the effects in the racks. And, and so that's how I use it. Then you have Logic. But Logic is just for Apple users. You can't get that in um, PC platform. So that's the thing with that. Um, now, FL Studio. FL Studio is a one-time price. You buy it one time, and that's it. You get all the updates for free, for life. Now, I do think they have some type of subscription based for like their extra stuff. I, I could be wrong, but it, it seems like they do if you want the extra stuff. And that also works like sphere with personas that's just kind of how that works if if that's what they're doing if not it it's just buy whatever you need to add on you know add on 
to your to your stuff and, and that's great too then you have bitwig bitwig works a little bit different where you you buy into a annual license to have bitwig now if you don't update that next year that your license ended you keep bitwig of course but you won't get the updates the thing with that is during that year time that you have bitwig that you paid the license for that that year they give you whatever updates that comes out is available for free so right now as a, this video we are in bitwig 4.1 right now if they upgrade to bitwig 5 within that year span you get bitwig 5 for free if they upgrade to bitwig 6 within the same year you get bitwig 6 that's how that works i don't see that happening but that's usually how that works so whatever upgrades come within that year time frame you you get it for free as long as you're in that you know in that time frame with other dolls like studio one and cubase you have that version that you pay for like for instance five 5.0 whatever upgrades that come in that is free well i'll say i'll say studio one so i think cubase might be doing something different for like their updates within the same the same number i think they're at cubase 11 you know so if 11.5 comes I, I don't know if there's a fee or not i i don't remember i haven't really been in that ecosystem in a while to to remember what's going on but for studio one for instance the way that that works is as long as you are in five you pay for the, the uh, perpetual license for five if it takes personas three years in 5.0 every update that you get within 5.0 you'll get for free until they come out with six right when six comes out then you'll pay the upgrade fee so it's like every doll every company does something slightly different but those are the things that you have to think about when it comes to picking the doll and then the other part of that is actually looking at videos you know like myself people that actually work in on the, in those platforms seeing what they're doing and I'll, I'll say this though when you pick a doll it's usually something unique about it that it does from the other platforms it's, it's not the basic making beats in a doll you know what i mean because all of them essentially do the same thing if you're just making beats that's great but i guess what you're looking for is what effects that comes already in the doll and i want to say that's almost like uh probably a, a cheap way of, of looking at it because for instance ableton live they're always putting effects in there which is cool I, I guess that's why i like ableton because every time they come out with an update there's new effect devices that are made available and you know devices that does something different and there's a, a huge community in this platform in this you know this is a huge community that that produces several things um and you can buy uh, presets from other people other 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 uh companies or whatnot that will create a vibe you know talking about devices you know presets plugins if you will you know inside of able to live um because well i think you have to have studio the studio version the sweet the sweet version in order to have access to that type of stuff you know what i mean in studio one so far is just whatever effects is that's there has just been there and you have to buy third-party plugins in order to do something a little bit different than what they offer the reason is kind of the same but reason do prefer, they, they do offer more effects things that you could do instruments stuff like that that works with their platform and it's usually a cost to get that extra thing or perhaps what they're doing that's new right now is the reason plus the reason studio plus so if you have that you know some of the things that they're doing is made available 
for you for free because you're paying the subscription anyway and it's kind of like what sphere is to personas if it's something that they release in their store like different sounds and presets to the already instruments that's that that's in studio one then you always get that for free as long as you're paying the subscription base but anyway it, it's just a lot a lot of things that you have to think about i guess it's more so about the feeling the workflow you know what do you, what do you feel you know do you like the clip launch thing where you can create a beat real fast can't forget about machine machine is awesome machine is great for creating beats really fast can't forget about npc if that's something you're into i never really got into it i started out with their hardware gear when it was the npc 2000 2000 xl the 4000 5000 those are the ones that i worked on seldomly i worked on a 3000 but that's the era i'm from and when they went to the digital ram i've already moved over to native instruments where that's where i do most of my beats you know creating stuff from that platform because i love the ecosystem and a lot of their plugins i can use without even having the the machine plugged in like complete for instance and using the contact player actually using the contact player is that thing that creates that a sweet tight integration between their their platform and the doll that i'm using because i can use i can use complete the, the contact player that is and have different instruments in there loaded in my doll again not even having the machine and not even having the complete controller you know that I, that I have in front of me I don't even need that if I don't need it but it's, it's nice that it's there but you know I, I can use the instruments that comes within the, the contact player and that that's what does it for me and a lot of their effects and things also I can use as standalone plug-in effects and just to, the option to use the machine as a plug-in inside of my DAW in addition to you know what i mean i don't have to like have machine up standalone and then ableton standalone or studio one standalone i don't have to do any of that um i believe it was rewire for a while but i don't never use rewire i just use machine as a plug-in inside of my doll that way everything can be streamlined synced in together and it's perfect all the time so that's usually my workflow when i'm using studio one machine is in there i can have machine run studio one like midi sync together with no problem hit start stop and it controls the whole project like that type of integration is what i love so that's the thing you know another thing you can look at it is integration between hardware and software that's definitely going to be a factor when you trying to choose the best solution for where you're trying to go and you got to think about the future you know when you add on and, and buy new things will your your purchase right now make a great solution for the future so you got to future proof yourself so to speak the other thing you want to look at is if you are doing vocal production that's a that's a great factor so for beat making I would say machine is probably a, a strong contender for making beats really quick fast on the fly and have quality beats as a matter of fact you know all of the kits that you get with the machine ecosystem is is they are all like full quality you know what i mean but are you recording vocal and mixing things like that so machine might be something to have as a tool and that's how i look at it machine is a tool that comes with me wherever i go whenever i hit on the topic of the doll that i'm using because i kind of use several of them depending on how i feel it's never a thought when it comes to using machine machine is like again a tool 
it's not a, a versus for me. Machine versus Ableton. Machine versus Studio One. Machine versus that. This, that. It's never that type of question. Machine, because machine could be used as a plug-in, I, I could take it wherever I want. I don't never have to choose whether I want to use it now. For some people, it's the machine versus NPC, maybe. You know, because they're they're kind of like neck and neck with what it can do. They both can be used as plugins inside your doll. So I guess that's the only time you you will you know decide which one you want to use inside your doll. But um, I can create full beats in Machine as well as I can create inside of Ableton or Studio One. You just those those are all the things you have to think about. And I'm just kind of giving you a synopsis as to how I use these devices. You should come on my stream and, and observe how I use these tools because that gives you a great idea as to like what works, what, you know, what, what could be that thing for you. So this may or may not be the answer you, you were looking for in terms of which doll is best, but it's, it's always about preference. It's, it's like choosing a house where to live. You know what I mean? It's all about the area, you know, what's in the area, you know, the weather, that's there um the pricing is what matters because that that definitely that that definitely tells you if you should be there or not um how well the house is built you know how old the furnace is when was the roof replaced you know is that something you willing to deal with when it, it comes time to replacing the roof or the furnace you know based on the fact that it's old or it's new um, what the house come with is it is it moving ready or is it something you willing to go in and fix and make it become what you want you know those are the type of questions you have to ask yourself when you choosing the right doll you know what I mean because I'll, I'll tell you this when you're on YouTube and you're looking at a lot of videos of producers making beats I mean, I mean there are some dope producers out here that make dope stuff in what they're using that's the key point they they picked the doll and they chose to make that their thing and they learned their doll and they mastered it and they come on youtube and make it look simple and plain and it's like man i want to go with fl studio and then when you go and grab fl studio you get frustrated because you can't figure out how here's here's the thing guys you you gotta also keep this in mind when you are in something new it takes time you have to constantly work that thing you know what i mean you got to constantly open up that doll and learn how to use it and then over time you will become the master in creating beats in that doll that you chose right so don't look at that you know what i mean because what seems easy for me may not be easy for you and i've I've turned so many people on to Studio One because I like Studio One, the tools that, that I use. I love how it's set up. And it's, it's a lot that's great about Studio One. There's a few things in there that I don't really care for. But overall, I always turn to Studio One. I'm using Studio One for mixing, mastering all day, every day. That's that's a no brainer. But for beat making, you know, my concept was a little bit different. I've created so many beats in there, but creatively, I've kind of just strayed away into some some other things. But I always come back to Studio One. You know what I mean? It's like one of those things. It's like a love and hate relationship I had with Studio One. I get frustrated sometimes and not go. And, and sometimes that might be what you guys deal with. And some of you guys that are watching this video, it might be what you're actually going through. You actually have a doll and you're frustrated and you wonder where you can go next. What What is better than what you're using? The best doll is always the doll that you are currently using. Whether you frustrated at it or not, it's always the best. You're going to always find yourself going back to that doll. If you invest in something else, different thinking is going to render different results. You're going to always go back to that thing that you've been using the most because that's just how it is i, I guess that's how our brain works because we are used to a certain workflow and we just kind of like always go back there i stray away from studio one i always find myself back you know that's just kind of how it works
you know but that's that's pretty much it in a nutshell guys i can be on this topic forever but just remember do do some research don't pick something because you see me using it i've been using ableton a lot lately don't pick ableton because you see me use it or you see somebody else dope use it because you can make dope music in any doll and i'll tell you this as well when you pick a doll i just want to make this one clear before i end this video because a lot of people think that the doll is what makes you a better producer that's not necessarily true the doll that you're using definitely provides tools and makes it easier for you to do what you do so it depends on what you're doing i might be making some dope r&b tracks in ableton live and you might be a edm producer looking for something and you see how i use ableton you might be turned on just the fact that i'm able to do some of the things that i'm doing but if if anything that i'm doing don't really benefit you and what you're doing in your genre and how you're using the doll it may be a waste of time you understand what i'm saying but the overall picture is that my sound carries what i do as a producer like my approach the way i articulate something it follows me the way i use ableton like the stuff i come up with it's oftentimes the same as what i will come up with in studio one right if, if that makes sense just just follow me I, I may come across things different sounds and you know because the effects are different in, in ableton the things i'm able to do in ableton might be different from the things i'm able to achieve in studio one but overall the production level the quality there we go that's the way i'm looking for the quality of production remains the same it remains in it, it if you think about it you, you guys gotta like sit down and really think about what i just said the quality of production remains the same i'm going to go out on a limb and say this if you are a suck beat maker like you can't make a beat to save your life if you're using ableton you're not going to make better beats in 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 cubase you just not you're going to create the same suck beats you know i'm i'm not saying anybody sucks i'm just kind of just you know what i mean i'm just i'm just saying you know it's not the gear that makes you better at what you do it's the person behind what you do you can use anything and if you're dope you just dope you know what i mean like when i started using ableton i didn't understand anything in ableton over time it took time to learn it and that, that's another thing you know this is what i said before it takes time to learn a doll you know what i mean you will get frustrated because things are not as easy as what you're used to but over time when you start learning the doll you start to do things and start you know stuff start to become comfortable and then you can really do your thing and you you know now i go in able to i'm like bet let's do it you know what i'm saying there's still a lot about ableton that i don't know yet but you know it just takes time to to get to where you where you want to be you know skill in, in terms of skill wise but bottom line what you're doing in ableton is going to be the same thing you do in bitwig it's just different tools different way of working you know they're essentially all the same but you know just different things that are made available you know ableton you got the browse on the left side and all your information section your tracks your information on the right side and other dolls they just switched you know studio one the browse is on the right side and your your track information is on the left same with bitwig and that's i think that's why bitwig feels more um more warm to me because of how it's laid out or whatnot you know i don't know sometimes that could be a psych psychological thing the colors the way things are designed that's also another thing you look at like man okay i like how this is set up i like how the browser works here and, and how fast i'm able to get to things here so you know those are also other factors as well but um overall it's all about you and what you do inside the doll so hope i didn't complicate things for anybody that's trying to figure it out i i am available to talk one-on-one -on -one with anybody that that has these type of this type of question and you know 
want to find that that true platform you know to work from um, just reach out to me all right Ella, creative sound creative university remember music is art you're the artist paint your picture stay creative without rules <laughs>